Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hey there, I'm Matt. And I'm Rachel. Welcome to the podcast. This is the coolest stuff on the planet. This time we're headed to Panama and not the city in Florida. Right, the country. Yes. Uh, specifically, we're headed to the Panama Canal. That's right. Uh, the Panama Canal is a 50 mile long waterway that plays very important role in international trade, and it also has quite an interesting history. It does. So the Panama Canal was built on the Isthmus of Panama. Uh, it's actually an extremely narrow strip of land that separates the Atlantic and the Pacific. Mm -hmm. So the Spanish probably weren't the first ones to notice that this uh, narrow strip of land would be advantageous for trade, but I suppose they were the first official discoverers. Yeah, it's true, but for some reason they never got around to the idea or they never had the idea to build a canal through the thing. So the French actually did that. Um, they beat them to it, if you will. Now, unfortunately, the French project actually ended in disaster in the late 1880s. Yes. And because uh, of difficulties with the terrain that they hadn't sort of foreseen. Yeah, it was pretty um, bad. Some really bad illnesses, including malaria and yellow fever. And actually, um, overall in that project, about 22,000 people um, died. And uh, also after the financial collapse of the French company, which was a company that was... was uh, basically producing the canal. The United States took up the gauntlet and they actually, they constructed the thing between 1904 and 1914. So this was um, kind of a bone of contention between the U.S. and Panama until 1979 when President Jimmy Carter negotiated the return of the canal to, to Panama um, after a 20-year transition period. Jimmy Carter is awesome. We just, we got to interview him for one of the other podcasts. Um, and this is completely unrelated, Rachel, I'm sorry. I know we're on stride here about the Panama Canal, uh -huh. but that man was probably the coolest, most endearing character that I have ever seen in my life. Okay, so on December 31st, 1999, uh, a company called the Panama Canal Authority actually took over control, and they, uh, they currently operate it, and they've been doing it effectively uh, ever since then, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a pretty brief snapshot of the history of the canal. Um, but let's talk a little bit about uh, the part that I find most fascinating. And me too. How it works. Yeah, absolutely. The engineering. That's what this site's all about. Yes. So the canal has um, a set of three locks, a raise and lower ships from sea level and down again. Oh, yes. Uh, there are names for them. There's the Gatun, the Pedro Miguel, and the Miraflores. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Very good. Um, and actually on the article on our site, which is called How the Panama Canal Works, has some really nifty um, diagrams that show you uh, exactly how the, the lock system actually works mm -hmm. and what the transit routes are. Oh, it's super cool. You should check it out. It's very neat. Somebody nice. brilliant came up with those ideas because who would have thought that you could lift a ship that easily with a tiny bit of water like that? So the Panama Canal saves trade ships uh, from having to go around the tip of South America, right? Um, and this actually saves over 8,000 nautical miles, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. Even though the canal is almost 100 years old, and in fact, it turned 95 uh, on August 15th of this year, it's still in pretty good shape, and actually, it's the transits that go through there account for about 5% of world trade. Since it's opened its doors in 1914, it actually had almost a million ships go through the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's supposed to hit a million in 2010. Oh, that's cool. And in fact, about uh, 14,000 vessels uh, every year use the Panama Canal. They see an uber amount of traffic there. And it also helps that each lock goes both ways. So you got a two-lane highway, basically. And because Panama wants their canal to be a viable option for transportation well into the future, um, they recently actually started an expansion program. to will add a, a third, um, bigger set of locks to the canal. Yeah, they actually just started that on August 25th, 2009 which is very close to the recording of this podcast. I won't say when, but it was very close. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, so this project will allow the canal to actually um, not just accommodate more traffic in general, but also larger ships. Yeah. Uh, currently, the maximum allowable dimensions for ships passing through the canal, um, they don't take giant super tankers, right? Mm -hmm. So the new set of locks is going to be, it's going to have plenty of room for these larger ships. Well, that's about all the time we have for this very fascinating topic. Um, mm -hmm. But if you'd like to learn more about the Panama Canal, you can always head to HowStuffWorks.com and check out some great articles on the topic. Yeah, you can also check out the Panama Canal Authority's website. Uh, it also has all kinds of details you might want to know, extra little details. 
For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.